Hello and welcome to Daily Kentucky with Carter and Carrie on Unsafe Space. Today is Tuesday, November 12th, and I'm reporting from uh, Fredericksburg, Texas, where it's very cold. It's 21 degrees here, or something like that. I never think of Texas as a cold place. Oh my gosh, you should come visit then. It's freezing. Like, it just, it's a, it's a place of extremes. And I've lived in other places of extremes, but not one where it's so where it can change so fast. Like yesterday morning, I was wearing a t-shirt and then literally saw the cold front come in. All the leaves dropped off the trees because the wind blew in real fast. It was so pretty. I tried to get a video of it and then, but it was too fast. And then boom, the cold was there. And I'm scrambling to find what winter clothes I have. Nice. Is that, uh, is that a metaphor for California's migrating or you mean actual cold? Oh, that's funny. I mean, actual cold. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I'm, um, I'm worried yeah. about us spreading our virus. <sighs> you uh, are. You guys yeah. are. I mean, even this morning, I saw a California license plate. It's quite a hat you have. Oh, by the way, uh, I did see a plate. I didn't get a picture of it, but I saw a plate that said late girl this weekend, and I thought of you. Um, oh, how insulting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, but I do like your hat. What is that? Is it a bear? What is that? Yeah, it's a you bear. Are? It's a bear? I think it's a bear. Okay. Um, so I have things to talk about. We took today off, not today. We took yesterday off because of Veterans Day. And um, I, uh, I've been, I'm on the road for work, but I uh, noticed, I joined briefly yesterday. First of all, a lot of the knitters had these, um, you know, Maria Tuscan was banned from Yarn Revolution in Seattle because she's uh, supposedly, quote, dangerous. Uh, or what do they call her? <laughs> so they call her? Yeah, they call her awful names. Everything that they're doing, they're doing to her. And if you guys are new to the channel and you haven't seen it, you should go watch the interview we did with Maria. Uh, just look for deprogrammed, unsafe space, Maria Tuscan. But anyway, they banned her from Yarn Revolution. And so she had a meet and greet, like a meetup where they knitted together in Seattle, an alternative kind of event with her, which I saw she did a post and went well, and she was thanking people for coming. And then people around the world, like not just around the country, but around the world, did these virtual uh, sit and stitch. Somebody organized these sit and stitch meetups where some people were meeting in all these different cities, getting together to knit in solidarity with Maria. And a lot of people were using her yarns and stuff. And then for people who could, who didn't have people in, in a town nearby, they had the virtual meet up and so I briefly I was able to join that one for five minutes and it was a lot of fun and it was just ladies sitting around knitting working on their projects together they were doing a zoom video chat like this were and you knitting no I didn't have anything to knit but I just wanted to say hi and one lady was um I told you this before but uh she was spinning or I'm gonna get it wrong anyway she was making yarn I think and it's she, spinning right yeah she showed me how she kind of turned the uh, her camera phone around so I could see it and it was really cool like she was like making a rope like you take the different strands and you kind of put it together and it, I'm totally ignorant about all of that so it was interesting to see it and yeah just to meet some of the people and then people that watch the channel it was cool awesome well so, you said you had another uh yarn yeah. related story you wanted to talk about yes so speaking of knitting it's very interesting to me and I was talking about it with those ladies yesterday that out of all the communities where this ideology has sort of converged and become the dominant belief system, that the knitting world is the world where I've people that people have started to push back. It's different. I mean, people push back in the gaming world, but it was mostly guys pushing back and it didn't, it didn't go well. It became this whole narrative of like misogynists. They, they were called misogynists and you know, it was just, it, it, it wasn't the same. I think because this is women, pushing back that it's it's a little bit different and it's almost like do you remember the time that Jordan Peterson said listen it's going to be up to the sane women to reel in the insane ones <laughs> like because men can't do it like you're going to have to stand up to these crazy I don't women. remember him saying that but that makes sense yes and so it I, I think there's something about um women standing up and saying like, no, we're not falling for this crap anymore. Because as we've talked about, this ideology is very attractive to women, especially because women on average are more, um, they're higher in openness, they're higher in compassion, they're higher, and all of those things are manipulated to, to 
kind of coerce them into adopting this set of beliefs. Their compassion and their empathy and all of those things are weaponized. So it's yeah. really cool to see the knitting world kind of pushing back. And um, as we've joked before, I think it'd be really funny if it's like the knitters who save us from the brink of destruction. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that would anyway. be awesome. Yeah. History books so, 100 years from now. It was the knitters who went to <laughs> turn the country around. <laughs> yes. With the famous knitting revolution. <laughs> You've got a statue with the knitting needles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, hey, well, you never know. Yeah, you never know. So anyway, that's been cool. And so um, there are two things that happened in the past week online, in, in, on Instagram and Facebook. There were two more mobbings, attempted mobbings that people tagged us in. And so I looked, I looked both of these up and I thought they were interesting case studies in how how one of them is how not to respond to the SJW mob and the other is how to respond to the SJW mob. So first of all, I'm going to share this image with you. I saw this before people started tagging us because when I noticed, this is how I noticed we were shadow banned. I was looking at the diversity hashtag and I saw this SJW post where they were attempting to pile on uh, a yarn maker called Asylum Fibers. So can uh, we just pause for a second? For those of yeah. you who are not into knitting, this is still important because this happens in lots of different communities. So this is an example. This is just a great look at a couple of case studies in this community and learn your lesson in your own community about how to react. So. Absolutely. It doesn't, it can apply to any community. So, so can you see this on the screen? Yeah. So this is a, a post that someone, so this is a, the yarn makers called Asylum Fibers and they have these different clever names for their yarn. So this yarn is called Madhouse, right? And so some SJW uh, who goes by growing underscore creating. I love the fact that these cowards never go by their real names. Have you noticed that? Most of these- Bully cowards... underscore basket case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like I understand why um, people who are afraid of the SJW mob don't go by their real names because they will mob you and they will try to destroy your business and they will come after your family. And they're, I mean, they are horrible people, but the bullies themselves, it's like, you guys are such cow. Like nobody treats you to the same, nobody treats you the same way. Nobody's coming. You should be grateful that people on this side, this side are not hypocrites who are willing to subject you to the same cancel culture. But anyway, so this person is called growing underscore creating and they posted a screenshot of asylum fibers, uh, madhouse. And there were a couple of other SJWs I saw that posted about it too, but this is the one I noticed under the diversity hashtag. And it says, how is this a thing? A company called Asylum Fibers with a base yarn called Madhouse. And so then a lot of comments followed. And this is how these mobs start. Somebody posts something like this, and then they all get whipped up into a frenzy. Which by the way, there's no argument here. It's just, how is this a thing? That's just, that's, that's just it. a, it's a rhetorical question that you're not supposed to answer because there's not really great, like it's not a, it's not yeah. actually a criticism. It's, it's not a criticism. Yeah. How's that had a thing, Carrie? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that's that's the level of it. It's very sophomoric. Yeah. So what happened though? This. So I saw that, and I actually naively thought, "That's really dumb. That's kind of a stretch. Are they really going to try and take this person down? You know, come on." But <laughs> I should have remembered that they took Maria down simply for making a video saying, "Hey, let's not be so mean to each other. I'm going to call right. Instagram for a while." And now they call her a Nazi and a KKK member. <laughs> so I should have known. So uh, it did become a thing very quickly. And a all the SJW knitters piled on her. They used a variety of tactics that they used. They were the very mean ones who are calling her all these names. Uh, they're saying it's insensitive to people with mental illness. Um, actually, there was another one I wanted to show because this is, um, let me see. So Asylum Fibers had Madhouse. They had other stuff that was also a play on Asylum. Yes, which is, it's just clever marketing. And, yeah. and come on, like, uh, this is a woman called Tomboy Fembags. <laughs> Wait, say that again? Tomboy Fembags. Tomboy Fembags. Yeah. Okay. Now, she also had, I don't have a screenshot of this one, but for Halloween, she had a picture of like a cartoon picture of someone dressed like a mental patient, like a, in a straight, in a straight jacket. Mm. And it said, my mental illness is not your Halloween costume. 
like Halloween is another one of these Halloween is cultural appropriate. Right. So, so her yeah. mental in, illness requires that she is constrained in a straight jacket. That's exactly Carter. I'm like, really? Your mental illness, you have to wear a straight jacket? I mean, if that's the case, <laughs> why are you online? Why are you, how are you typing if your right. arms are constrained? <laughs> these people are ridiculous. Why somebody in a straight jacket representing like a mat, like we all know that image. I mean, think of, um, think of Hannibal Lecter, right? Someone like that. Some, someone from a movie, like somebody who's like a mad, uh, crazy murderer. Are you really going to identify with that because you have depression? Right. <laughs> but she does. I'm anxious about my student loans. Therefore. Therefore. I'm exactly like Hannibal Lecter. Okay, so this is, she shared a variety of posts, but here's one of them. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, you might want to read it out loud for people because it may be small. Okay, so this is after she had started attacking asylum fibers on her page, Tomboy Fem Bags. She says, what other disease would we do this with? What, what would happen if someone named a yarn brand after cancer wards? <laughs> <laughs> someone could, by the way, great business idea. Someone should, should start a yarn company based on types of cancer. Uh, right. Once again, it's like you can use humor to make fun of dark things and bring. Yeah, just light. donate. Like, hook up with a charity that, uh, like, you know, uh, leukemia society or something, and donate part of your profits to fighting cancer, and then name everything cancer. Yeah. Anyway, so what would happen if someone named a yarn brand after cancer words? If Asylum Vipers wants to convey the alternative definition of asylum, then their branding should line up with their intention. Okay, that was one. And now here's the other one. Um, let's see. So they apologize, which I'm about to show you. They caved. Asylum Barbers caves. Yes, they caved. They're, they're an example of how not to respond to this idiotic mob. But they caved. And what have we told you about caving? It's never enough. It's never, you're always going to be beholden to them and you're going to have to apologize forever. So what does she post after they cave? I'm going to call bullshit. <laughs> right. Asylum fibers caused harm. They use that word all the time. They caused harm publicly. She needs to publicly own that, publicly admit her mistake, and publicly apologize. So then she had to apologize again because it wasn't enough. And then, and then I'm going to show you what she posted the second time. It's really just disappointing because you would hope that people would be able to see how this has already played out before with people like Maria and Sakmatician and the other, like Karen Tim, all the people have been targeted and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to stand in truth and I'm going to stand for what I believe in and not be a little coward who bows to the mob, but no. So uh, here's what she did. And by the way, you should check out her page. Before this, this is a woman who is a total, I mean, she's in their camp. No wonder she caved. She is an SJW. She posts all these Photo, like she has obviously a lot of diverse clients and friends and her posts couldn't be more in line with this belief system and yet and yet she's not ideologically pure enough for them because she has a cheeky dane asylum fibers right. she must be tarred and feathered it's like they want her to walk through the streets naked while people throw vegetables at her and yell shame shame you know <laughs> um okay so here she says here's her big apology i want to share with you that I'm working to make some changes to my branding. Several people from our community have reached out and made me aware of the ways many of my branding choices have been insensitive, offensive, and hurtful. Okay. Now, I wanna, uh, th these words, insensitive, offensive, and hurtful, harmful, they use those words all the time. That's how they get you to bend. They're like, don't you care about the people you're hurting? You can't fall for that shit. They say that stuff to you while they're trying to hurt you. Asylum fibers, they are trying to hurt your business. They are trying to financially hurt you and they are trying to emotionally and spiritually hurt you and they are trying to hurt your name and they're dragging it through the mud and, they're, and, and you believe the lie that they care about hurt feelings, that they care about harm. They don't care about harm. They don't care about hurting people. That's what they're doing to you. But, but, but people fall for this. Anyway, so she says, I'm very grateful to the community for their support and their generosity and taking the time to help me learn and grow. Oh, I realize that I have perpetuated the stigma around mental health, which I deeply regret. I am truly sorry and will do better. Thank you for your continued support as I work 
to align my branding with my values. Um, so can we just pause for a second? Because the other yeah. thing that I don't like that they do is they have, and this is not just with the words hurtful or harmful, they've done this with, and there's an entire vocabulary list they've done this with. They conflate uh, words that connote physical harm with uh, emotional yes. dis dislike or discomfort. And it that's intentional. This is what leads to them being able to argue that silence is violence. It would lead, it's what leads Antifa, like that, that thought process is what justifies Antifa's violent behavior because they say, well, you were use these words and they were hurtful. And so when you read this word hurtful, you may think that they're, they're only talking kind of metaphorically about emotional pain, but they will then piggyback on top of that and, and conflate that with actual physical hurt and have no distinction between the two and use that to justify actual violence. This happens all the time. And so one thing that I'm pretty sensitive to is this conflation of, of physical and emotional damage. And you really can't let them get away with that. You've got to be very vigilant because that's one of their wedges into corrupting a whole bunch of words and language and justifying violence, which obviously uh, they, they do all the time. You're, you're exactly right. If they can conflate the two, then they can, they can feel justified in using actual physical harm and actual physical violence and, and thinking of it as self-defense because, well, your opinion was, quote, harmful. Your opinion, right. quote, violence. Therefore, I'm being harmed. Therefore, right. therefore I can throw a milkshake at you that has concrete in it, right? right. Like that's how they think. Um, you're, you're totally right about that. You know what? Are you reading the book for book club right now, Coddling of the American Mind? I just started, honestly. Uh, so, I, I think I mentioned <laughs> to you, I wanted to read Righteous Mind first, which I did. Uh, which is great. And, yeah. And now um, I'm reading uh, Coddling. And so I like, big, I've got to the part where they, he, at the very beginning, he talks about one of my other favorite books, which is Anti-Fragile. Um, yeah. um, so I'm liking where it's going so far. And they've, you know, but yes. So I ask that because he talks about how these definitions of harm have expanded in the past five to 10 years. In, in, mm. it, with, and I believe it, it coincides with this ideology spreading, but the idea of PTSD, for example, post-traumatic stress disorder used to be very specific. It was very specific and it was related to, mostly it was, it was talked about people uh, like obviously combat veterans and people who had seen themselves or someone else doing something that was right the trauma bad. to which it referred trauma. was actual physical trauma right was trauma and then it and then of course it expanded which it should have i believe to include other types of trauma like rape trauma um you know anyone who's been the victim well, of rape trauma is physical just to be clear right physical that's what i mean anybody who's been the victim of some type of physical and um, trauma and emotional trauma as a result of that it, it expanded and it should have but now it's ex now it's expanded to the degree where people are like you know I had a bad argument with someone once and I have PTSD. Like it's just like become this sort right. of Ben Shapiro is going to speak on my campus. I'm traumatized. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shapiro, <laughs> Shapiro just spoke at Stanford. I have PTSD. <laughs> right. Yeah. I can't, they have a, was it, was it Christina Huff Summers who pointed out one of the colleges that she spoke at, they had a room with puppies. They were like, if you, if you need a room to escape the trauma of having Christina Huff Summers <laughs> yes. speak, Campus. There's a room with Play-Doh and puppies in it. Yeah. You can go and comfort your inner child. Anyway. Um, but yeah. Well, that's what this idea of safe spaces is. Safety is this. Um, it's a notion that, again, typically we would have, we would have associated that with physical safety, right? But now they use, they use the language of physicality to uh, describe basically just disagreements or emotional discomfort. Um, and like the title of the book we just talked about, they're coddling people today. Um, they're totally coddling people. It's not going to turn out well for their ability to survive in the world. Yeah. So, well, I don't want to spend too much time on the woman who did it wrong, but I will say one encouraging thing about this is now a lot of the comments that are negative are going to show up at the top because – of the algorithm. These are people that I know and follow. So the, the, some of the people who watch our show, but if you were just to look at this without it being 
it logged into my account, you'd probably see up top, there's a bunch of people who do love that she caped and they're all like, you know, good for you. And I look forward to you changing your branding, your name. But of course, then here are some of our followers who are like, so sad you caved. I'm sorry, you're being bullied. You've done nothing wrong. Um, asylum seeker, you know, there are other definitions for asylum. Please don't cave. So what, what I like about this is that you're starting to see people who, again, are pushing back. And in the past, people were quiet. They were afraid. And a lot of times it's because, well, either they were afraid and nobody else was speaking, was speaking up against it either, or because people didn't know enough about this belief system. And again, on its face, they cynically use stuff about hurting people and harm and offensiveness. And so people with good intent and goodwill are easily pulled into this. And are, and if they, don't, if they don't know what it is and they haven't looked deeply into it and they're just looking at the base, basic facts, like, oh, I guess she did something harmful. I guess she did something hurtful. So I'm not going to say anything, right? But what I really like about this is now you, you have people who are in the knitting world who are like, no, you shouldn't have rolled over for these bullies. So that's cool. Okay. And it so doesn't, look, it doesn't, like you pointed out, it's not going to work. They're going to continue to pick on her. They're not going to like, this isn't, this isn't a purity over. Test. The, the purity, they just dial the purity level up next time. And yes, something else. They're, they'll force her to change her name. They, they're not going to like asylum fibers. Yeah. Uh, so she already like posted a new branding with the same name with like rainbow colors. I see that. Yeah. Do you think that's enough, lady? No. <laughs> You're right. not, they're not going to stop. You're going to have to change your whole name. You're going to lose all the work and effort you put into building Asylum Fibers. And as soon as you let go of that URL and that, I would like to buy it. I would like to purchase it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? Maybe you're not an East Coast person, but do you remember Crazy Eddie? In no. New York? Ah. Well, some people from the East Coast will remember Crazy Eddie. His prices were insane. His ads ran in New York <laughs> City for years and years and years. And this reminds me of that. It's this, uh, I like, I actually like the name Asylum Fibers. I think it's an awesome name. Uh, it's a great name. They should totally embrace it. They should have Madhouse and Nutter and all the different, they should just Straight jacket. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's but. a fun brand. And I mean, I'm sorry, have you people never been to a haunted house? Like, what do you do at Halloween? Do you like <laughs> scary movies? Like, what is wrong with you? Right. <laughs> like, I mean... Although I guess if she really wanted to troll them, she could name things like depression, PTSD. That would be really funny if she went, uh, what they claim that she's doing, which is being offensive towards their mental health issues. Right. Maybe she Not, should. You know. She should do that. You should, she should have yarn. She should be like, here's my new branding. This one's called Snowflake. Bipolar Disorder. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like get real serious. This is called Manic Depressive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She this should is name, called borderline. This is called borderline. She should name it after the the uh, mentally the ones who, the ones who supposedly have mental health issues who are coming after her. She should name yours <laughs> after them. Absolutely. This one's called tomboy fembags. <laughs> <laughs> what are fembags? I don't even know what those are. Uh, I think we. I think it's a tomboy who makes feminine bags. Oh. Like like she's in the knitting world too. So. A tomboy who makes feminine bags. All right. I think Is that I just, a gender? I just want I, to be clear. What's I the? Just, I just assume that's what it means. But anyway, okay. So um, here, now this is an example. This girl's on Instagram as well. But for whatever reason, the mobbing took place on her Facebook page. So we're going to go to Facebook. Now this is a pattern maker. A lot of the, I've found that a lot of the knitters also, like Maria, they're both in the knitting world and they're in the sewing world. And a lot of them do um, sell their own patterns and have their own storefronts and stuff. And so this is a woman who has her own storefront. It's called Little Ragamuffin. And she has a couple different product lines. Her store is called Little Ragamuffin. She has a line of menswear patterns for shirts and stuff for men called Good Old Boy. And the SJWs have decided that Good Old Boy is a racist term and she needs to get rid of her product line and rename it. Now, all of this aside from like, she has models and friends who wear, who are in her, on her website, who it's not all white guys. First of all, it's like, there's men of color wearing these shirts. It doesn't, but that doesn't matter to them, of course. Right. And it doesn't matter to them what good old boy means to her or to anyone else. It doesn't matter if it doesn't mean something racist to her or to anyone else. 
they've declared it racist, therefore it's racist, therefore change your whole effing business lady or we're gonna make you pay. Right. So they started doing to her what they've done to the knitters. They started contacting all the vendors that she works with, people who carry her pat. They've started trying to hurt her business. And she did the, in my opinion, she did the right thing. She took a couple of days, but instead of folding like asylum fibers, this is what she did. And, and it's been amazing to see this. I love this. She goes, after reflecting, can you see this on my screen? Yes. Okay, so after reflecting on the latest outrage, in quotes, because she's right, it's manufactured outrage, it's bullshit. Yep. Um, after reflecting on the latest outrage directed at my business, I have decided not to pull the good old boys pattern. I refuse to let a couple of loud mouths from a so-called free speech group on Facebook dictate how I run my business and how I name my patterns. They may want to grab a dictionary and look up what the term free speech really means. There's I have a question about that. Who is this group that's claiming to be free speech and outrage? It's a group of SJWs. They have a secret group. It's, it, they, they have free speech in the title, supposedly, but they're <laughs> clearly not about, just like they name, it's, it's Orwellian. How it's like they, Antifa. Yeah, like Antifa. They name it the opposite of what they are right. all the time. You know this. Ministry of Truth, right? <laughs> right. Like it's all like very 1984. Uh, war is peace. Freedom right. is slavery. Right. Uh, free speech is not offensive. Free speech. So, okay, so this continues. There's nothing offensive about the term good old boys. The term has been used to represent the Western style and a man who's, who is country to the core, a rebellious but hardworking man who loves his country, his family, believes in doing good, and has strong morals and family values. If that offends you, then you're the one with the problem, and these patterns are not for you anyways, which is a great point. How many of these bitchy little SJWs buy her patterns anyway? You know, Right, and actually, by the way, I think that same was probably true for Asylum. If there were people that actually were offended by Asylum, like if they were offended by Madhouse as a, a name, they probably weren't the kind of people who liked edgy names like Asylum Fibers in the first place. They probably right. weren't customers. And they're not going to buy from her now. They, they, you're kidding yourself. Asylum fibers. If you think these SJWs are going to start buying from you, right? Anyway. So, suddenly, the fiber orders will be coming in. Yeah, because you so, apologize. Good job. Good job. So she says, "I am truly sorry that some of the vendors participating in our giveaways were harassed by a miserable group of people who have nothing better to do than spend their time bullying others online. Ironically, these people claim to be from a free speech group, but they are nothing more than bullies who need to find a better way to spend their time." Unfortunately, a number of vendors have chosen to give in to the loudmouths and have pulled out of this month's giveaways. This was supposed to be an exciting month where I got to give back to my wonderful customers who have helped to grow ragamuffin patterns into something beyond what I ever imagined. Thank you for taking this ride with me, and I promise to stay strong and be here for each and every one of you with the very best in vintage modern PDF sewing patterns. Facebook is not the real world. I choose to live in the real world and provide my customers with top-notch patterns and not get stuck in the mud with a bunch of people just looking to start trouble. Again, thank you to my customers. In honor of our First Amendment and the real definition of free speech, for the rest of the month, the good old boy pattern will be 50% off to anyone who uses the coupon code free speech. The full Western collection is on sale 50% <laughs> off now. 1110, no code needed. Thank you to my awesome customers, testers, and everyone who sent me private messages of encouragement. This is freaking awesome. And look at the, look at the photos, right? And yep. of course, they got really mad. They're like, how dare you put black men in these shirts? <laughs> uh, they dressed themselves. <laughs> yeah, they uh, <laughs> pretty sure they agreed. To, they wanted to be in these pictures. Pretty sure they know how to put on a shirt. Yeah. And so she just is friggin' rad. I don't know this woman, but I love her. I admire her. And look at the overwhelming support. Again, this is encouraging because in the past, you remember, people were so afraid. They wouldn't say, Shit. nobody would support someone like this. They would all run at people. We all would, I mean, I used to be one of these cowards. They would take down people in the online feminist world all the time. And I would just shut my mouth and let it happen. They came after Megan Murphy and I didn't participate in the pylon, but I didn't sure didn't say anything. I was too afraid. And, but I, I love that it, things are changing and that people are not afraid to say like, good for you. And I stand with you and, you know, call it for what it is. These people are bullies. Um, I love I'm just looking at her page. Just, I just, just so people understand what happens. She's got her posts prior to this were like, one like, two likes, 14, that's a high one, 14. This one's 26, that's pretty good. This one that you just read, 
There's 182 plus 352 comments. I mean, they love it. This this was good for her. This reaction was good for her. Yeah, she did the right thing. And yeah. you know what? People are buying her patterns. And the, again, the SJWs would never buy her patterns anyway. A lot of the ones who are not happy in the comments, they're complaining about how, well, one of them, okay, one of them basically said, you know, she totally, they always, they always expose their own bigoted beliefs, right? And this one woman was like, you know, this thread and the people congratulating you, it reeks of Budweiser and Marlboro Reds. <laughs> like, no. uh, okay, so, well, first of all, yes, yeah, so what if it so, does? But no. Those are like, two products that are legal and fine for people to consume, that's fine. Right, but, right, but Carter, my point is, that's not even true. That's like her stereotype Fair. Of, of who the supporters are. It's like you... That's a person who lives in your head, and you're. They do to... have the left has this weird redneck stereotype of anyone who's slightly on the right. They assume that they, you know, are in cousin marriages and yeah, you know, drunk all the time and, uh, yeah, just chewing tobacco and like you know, I'm not I'm I'm not saying don't drink or ever do chewing tobacco. Although chewing tobacco is very bad for you, um, it's just this. It's that kind of white trash stereotype is their stereotype for anyone. And they have no respect for those people. They have no respect for people like that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but, the, but the same people in urban centers who have a different set of possibly dysfunctional habits, lots of respect for them. Yeah. So just a couple things about the people who are, who are upset about this. They are continuing to use it. I just like to point out the patterns for people. They always use the thing about like, you're hurting people and you don't care about it. Okay. That's not an argument. Anybody, every, like any, any, how can I phrase this? Anything that you do as a human is going to help some people and hurt some people. Okay. Like, uh well, that's a that's a pretty broad definition of hurt. I'm not. I don't agree with. Right, that. but according to their definition of hurt, like it doesn't. It's like you're hurting someone. According to their definition, it's like okay, I go and buy a tomato at the grocery store. Right. There, there are people who no. There are people who I'm I'm helping by buying that tomato, and there are people who may be being hurt by me purchasing that potato, tomato. Why? Because you could have bought a different tomato from someone else. Is that the idea? Right. Or maybe it's not fair trade or whatever. Like I remember this, this SJW who I worked with on a TV show on the late night show. Oh my God. He thought he was, he's a comedian, but he was an SJW first. So he wasn't funny at all. But at the time I was an SJW and, and I didn't understand why I didn't find him funny. <laughs> cause I agree with all of his politics, but in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, cause he, he put the ideology first and it wasn't funny. Anyway, he used to complain, and if we went to, uh, on, a, on a, this is when we were working on a TV show, if we went across the street to Chipotle, he'd be like, why are you guys going to Chipotle? The tomato workers are on strike. Like, he would make you feel bad about every little thing you <laughs> ever did. That's like, look, I could just kill myself, and then I wouldn't hurt anyone. <laughs> like, someone's always, pro there's always going to be something to bitch about with any decision, right? So, I'm sure there are maybe, maybe some people who don't like the name good old boy and are offended, but, but not many. I doubt it. I don't know any, most of these people in the comments, they're not really offended. They're not really offended. They're just jumping on some hateful, resentful bandwagon and trying to get some, they like, they like the spectacle of making this woman bow and scrape and apologize. Right. And so look at this, Carter. Here's what, here's some of the, uh, it's okay to offend people also. Like it's, it's also, not, yeah, it's okay to offend that's people. Not a, that's not a horrible sin. It depends on why and whom. Okay, look at this. What are you going to read? What is this? I'm going to read this one. So this, this girl says, and most, and by the way, you guess, um, I just go ahead and guess the uh, race and sex of most of these commenters who are unhappy. <laughs> yeah, right. They're all, they're all upper middle class white women. Yes, you're right. Bingo, you won. <laughs> nah. So. <laughs> yeah, and their Lululemons just finished their kombucha, looking for <laughs> something to bitch about. <laughs> they just came home. They just came home from goat yoga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're still they're still planning for Burning Man next year. They're right. drinking their eight dollar oh. lattes in their right. Lululemon. Um, so they one of them even said at one point she was like, "All of you white women or all of you white people," and da 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 da. And she goes, "And by the way, I'm white," and I'm like, "Yeah, of course you are." <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah. So anyway. 
this, this white woman says, people said the name of your pattern is hurtful and harmful to many. And your response is to double down <laughs> instead of being like, wow, not my intent, but I sure don't want to align myself with racism. I bet I can come up with a better name. Yikes. I mean, you've got to see that not being racist is the clear choice here, right? I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you're defending this, your privilege is showing. Okay. So they don't have any arguments. Look at this whole, this woman just wrote like six sentences and there's no argument there. She doesn't tell you why it's racist. There's no argument to explain why it's racist. It just is. Well, I'm sorry, lady. That's your opinion. And I think your opinion is fucking stupid. Now, it's, it's a free country. You can have a stupid opinion like that. But if you're not going to make an argument to why I, should, for, like, why I should agree with you, well, then goodbye. You don't get to act like you, you can define what racism is for everyone else. This woman just told you in her post what the term good old boy means to her. And it doesn't mean something racist. And you have no response to that except to say, except to use your magic words and say privilege, right? Well, again, this is, man, this is also just, I think, bad thinking. This is like, this is dumb epistemology, right? And if you can see through this, then you can have the intestinal fortitude to stand up to it. Mm -hmm. People, she says, people said the name of your pattern is hurtful and harmful to many. Okay. They said that. That does not make it true. It does not make me bad. It does not make it like it doesn't make it even relevant. So people said it. Who cares? That's, that's great. People said it. That is not a and a the, the fact that people said it hurts does not mean that I've done anything wrong, right? That you could say that to someone. I mean, this isn't the case of that, but you could say that to a doctor. The kid says it hurts when you stab him in the arm with a needle. Yeah, I bet he does, but you know. He needs medicine. So like, what do you want from me? The fact that you're hurt doesn't matter. And people can be hurt about, as we know, especially actually uh, people with mental, <laughs> mental issues and emotional issues can be hurt about anything. Um, by, by the way, the bandwagon approach is not a good way to base your decisions and your opinions. You know what else people have said throughout history? People said, hey, people said slavery is cool. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, that's just said, like that populum, right? That's a yeah, yeah. yeah. People said, "Hey, during uh, Nazi Germany, people said that we should round up the Jews, <laughs> right? <laughs> because they're taking. Hey, you know what? People said that the the Jews have too much privilege and they're taking all of the jobs. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, anyway, they, that's a dumb. That's not an argument. People said. People said. Anyway, you're gonna Wait, like this. Want, one. But look at her. This person's expectation is that when you're told someone says that the pattern is harmful your reaction should be immediately um apologetic wow not my intent i i need to distance myself from intending to do anything you know what people are going to draw their own conclusions about your intent screw them let them let them the I right agree. people will know that little ragamuffin did not intend to hurt anyone by making a pattern called good old boys and the dumb people and the overly sensitive snowflakes will ascribe to her whatever evil intent they want. They'll, they'll decide she's part of the KKK because she used the words good old boys. Yeah. Okay. You can't get over that. She's never going to, like, you're never going to convince people to not hate you and ascribe evil meaning to you. If they don't like what you're doing, they don't like you, they're going to call you all sorts of names and they're going to assume that you're the most evil person in the world and they're going to write it on Facebook. So, Get over it. And the other thing is- when The rest you, of the people know you're not. When you apologize to the SJW mob, you can't do that without admitting they're right. And so if you don't think they're right, then don't friggin' apologize. Right, it, it, you accept their premise. You, you accept, accept their all premise, of their yeah. premises by arguing or by apologizing. Exactly, and that's all they care about. And now they've gotten you to accept their premise. And so this whole thing about like, that wasn't my intent, but I don't want to align myself with racism. Well, that requires you to accept their premise that it's racist. Well, guess what? I don't think it is. Little Ragamuffin doesn't think it is. And we don't have to agree with you, Jesse Donahue. Okay, then look, you're going to like this one. This is the same one. This is the same comment, but in different words. I'm really grossed out that you would choose to keep the problematic title <laughs> rather than just admit that you made a mistake. By the way, problematic, great name for a new set of patterns, Little Ragamuffin. Uh, Please do problematic patterns. Problematic patterns, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, you've lost my support. Why fight so hard to keep a name that hurts people? Same, arg same again, same lack of arguments, but same right. uh, tactics. They, this whole thing about you're hurting people, why not just apologize? And, and another way of saying this, another way of saying what these people are saying is, hey, we've used the magic words at you. Why aren't you bowing and kissing the ring? Right. <laughs> And it's interesting, like, why, why fight so hard to keep a name that hurts people? The answer is because I have self-esteem. It's mine. I'll name it whatever I damn well please. And if you want to be hurt, you be hurt. And if enough people are hurt, no one will buy it. But if people know that my intent is not bad and they like the name, then I'll do fine. And you can disagree with me all you want. But it's, you require, it requires self-esteem to stand up to this and say, yeah, I, you know what? I don't. I don't care. Yeah. You know what? I saw in the, in the hotel last night, I saw some clips from Braveheart, which I haven't seen since I was in high school. And, but there was a relevant part where he's talking about the, the, the future queen, right? Comes to see him and she's sympathetic to his cause. And she's like, why don't you just bow and kiss the ring? That's essentially what she says. She's right. like, why don't you just serve the king and say, I pledge my fealty to you. Like I pledge my loyalty to you. Why don't you just do it and save your life? This is when he's in prison about to be tortured and killed. Right. And he says, because, and, and actually his friends ask him this too. He's like, cause he, he's like, I want a wife and I want kids and I just want a happy life, but it means nothing if I don't have my freedom. And he says to her, if I, if I do that, if I kiss that ring, then, then nothing I stand for means any, my life is worth nothing. And that's what you're saying. I mean, I, I know I'm, 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 uh, making it more dramatic, but that's exactly what this is. Is like, yes, you could apologize and kiss the ring and say, I'm going to change the name of my patterns. I'm going to change the name of my company. And then what do you stand for? You stand for nothing. Like who even are you at that point? At that point, anything they tell you to do, you're going to do because you don't have a backbone. You don't have any idea of, 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 um, you can, you can't stand up for yourself. You have no integrity at that point. You're just a puppet to the mob. So so yeah. I, I totally agree with you. It's all about self-esteem, Carter. This That's is why I hate pragmatism as a, as a philosophy, and it's very prevalent. Pragmatism only leads to evil because the, the, like, what will happen is you'll just get, you'll cave into bullies like this. You'll, like, evil will, you, you have to have principles to stand up to bad philosophy. And if you're just a pragmatist, you're just going to compromise. Um, there's a, one of my favorite... Uh, I might be butchering this, but one of my favorite Ayn Rand quotes is, um, in any contest between food and poison, only death can win. Any compromise between food and poison, only death can win. Um, which I love because there's this, there's this, we live in this world of like, well, just be practical. Just like, just apologize to the mob who wants, like, no, no, they're wrong. They're wrong. Their philosophy is bad. Stand up to it. That the only way to fight it in the long term is to stand up to it. You're not going to, Ultimately, compromising is just accepting it. Yeah. It's like, uh, is it Aunt Alexander Solzhenitsyn who has that quote about like one man telling the truth? I'm, I'm butchering it, but it just one man telling the truth can bring down a tyranny of lies. I don't know who it was, but it sounds but, like. Yeah, it's, I think it's Solzhenitsyn, but, um, but yeah, it's that same thing. It's like, just, just stand up for what you believe in. Um, okay, so then this is the last one I'll show you because this is the other tactic that they pull. Now, yep. uh, it's a white woman who says, I hope you're all taking note of the fact that it's only white people emphatically supporting your decision. Now, this is funny because if you scroll down the comments, there are women of color who are supporting the decision. And actually, one of our viewers uh, who is very loud about the fact. And, and, and what she points out uh, is that, hey, guess what? It's only white people in the comments bitching at her. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's actually the opposite. And, and they ignore, they ignore the black women. They ignore the, the, uh, any quote, marginalized person, ethnic minority who doesn't agree with this, who doesn't agree with the SJW outrage. They ignore them. They pretend like they, they're not even there. They pretend like they don't even exist. And you want to talk about racism? It, it, here's a white woman here pretending to speak on behalf of women of color and ignoring the women of color who don't agree with her. Yeah, um, they're racist. They're totally racist. And, it, and it's funny because, again, don't look at what people say, look at what they do. Right. What and they're that? projecting again, right? Yeah. Notice how only white people are supporting you. 
actually, you're projecting. You're Only projecting. white people are supporting you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like the, the, that whole white savior thing. You know, it is. I'm here, to, I'm here to save the marginalized people from your dangerous and hurtful and problematic patterns that you sell on Facebook to a, a small- you force them to wear. <laughs> That you you force these you force these poor black men to put on your yeah. your shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I thank you for humoring me. I know this was kind of a long one, but no, look, if you guys haven't already, and I'm sure the, at least those of you watching who are in the knitting community, you're probably all already aware of both of these. But for any of our other viewers who are not in these worlds, if you're on Instagram or Facebook please go and support Little Ragamuffin. Go subscribe, send her a little message of support, let her know that she did the right thing and that um, people are not afraid to say so and that, you know, that I hope this helps her business. I would, I'm fascinated because I think the tide is turning. I think you're going to start to see instead of it being devastating to your business like it was to Socmetician and to Tuscan Knits, I think the tide is turning. You're going to start to hopefully see it be very good for your business when people can see that you're authentic and you're strong and you're not afraid and you have a backbone, then, then um, yeah, you're gonna lose some people, but screw them, you don't want those people in your community, so. People also generally appreciate authenticity. They right? do. And when you switch, when you apologize, um, especially if you're someone who is like clearly just doing it to appease the crowd, um, they lose respect for you, both sides lose respect for you. Um, they might hate Little Ragamuffin, but they're not gonna, they, but they respect Little Ragamuffin's response. <laughs> like, yeah, Little Ragamuffin has, has not caved. And so they might hate and they may not want to do business with her, some of them, um, but she'll have respect. Um, and it's hard. It's one of those things where you just shut them down by not agreeing. There's nothing left for them to do at this point. That's the other thing. There's really nothing left for them to do. They've attacked. They've done what, you know, they've put all the pressure on her and she's flipped them off. And so there's not, they're out of moves at this point. They can continue going after people who support her, but they're out of, like, there's no more bullying to be done with her. No, they can continue to try to bully her, but she's already stood up to them and, not, and, and it's been fine. They'll get tired because there's no, there's no progress here. Yeah, they'll move on and they'll find another target and they'll forever call her, like they do Maria, they'll forever call her a white nationalist and all this shit that she's not and they'll try to forever tar her name but she can walk proud with her head held high knowing that she didn't kowtow to these people and be forever indebted to them. Can you imagine? Like, <laughs> Asylum Fibers, congratulations. You're going to have this monkey on your back for the rest of your friggin' until you throw it off. Like, they're always going to be there bitching about every little thing you do. Right now, actually, anything Little Ragamuffin does is kind of immune because they already she's already yeah. categorized as like, oh, she's one of the evil people. So she could come out with... She could come out with the problematic pattern line and mock them. And like, there's no, Do there's it. no more damage to be done. It's done. It's over. Do uh, it. So uh, I do think I would like to see a Tuscan coalition form in the sewing arts and knitting and sewing arts of. Uh, yeah. Just with like good humor, good spirits, like positivity and 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 just drown these people out and don't let them get away with it they're not they're not the ones on the side of compassion and kindness and they don't care about hurt everywhere they go they're trying to hurt people's business they're trying to hurt their name they're trying to um hurt all the people who associate with them um so don't let them pretend like they're the ones who care about hurt hurting people um anyway okay i'm gonna have to go i've got to wrap this up all right have well thank you for uh bringing this to my attention. I'm not, I don't spend much time on Instagram or on Facebook. So uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have noticed any of this, but this is. Isn't it cool? I think it's good. I think it's a good sign. I think it's a yeah. good sign. And maybe, maybe Maria and little ragamuffin should team up and start, uh, start a movement. So, all right. Well, thanks Gary. Thank you everyone for liking, subscribing and sharing. We keep getting more subscribers. Uh, not quite on a daily basis, but on, you know, at least a weekly basis and it is helping us. So we really do appreciate it. And uh, please don't forget to share the content, uh, hit the like button and, uh, and subscribe. So Carrie, have a good day. Everyone else have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. I forgot to do our countdown of what is this? Is this today? Oh. <laughs> uh, it's today's day. 
26. Is it today? Day is today's day 26 of Mikey being banned from Twitter and day, Oh, maybe. Yeah. Somewhere that sounds seven, about right, but I haven't calculated it. I think yeah. it's day seven of us being censored on Instagram. So anyway, something like that. Well, <sighs> we're hoping that our shadow ban goes away soon. Um, by the way, we put up a post. If you guys don't understand how shadow banning works, I had, I was really annoyed with these morons. I'm sorry. I, I the name calling, but seriously, if you, if you, if you can look, there was one woman who it's like, you can physically with your own eyes, go to the diversity hashtag and the other hashtags that we've used on unsafe space, diversity, diversity with an E and diverse, um, Tuscan knit sockmetician. And you can, with your own eyes, see that our unsafe space posts no longer appear there anymore. Right. And you can go to search yourself and you can type in unsafe space and see that we don't come up and you, and to argue against that is to argue. It's like, I want you to debate me about whether gravity is real. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like, I'm I know. Sorry. I, it's, I mean, it, you and I were talking about this, Carrie. I feel like they're standing on the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa holding a bowling ball. And they're saying, well, I'm not going to drop it because some people say it doesn't, the gravity doesn't exist. Just drop the ball. Watch it fall. It will watch exist. It just like, just drop the ball. Go, go there. Yourself. Go look with your own eyes. That's what's funny. I was like, I'm not going to argue this. It's fact. With screenshots for people that don't know how to go there, we put some screenshots up if you really don't understand what we're talking about. But this woman understood. She's just wanting to argue. She's one of these pointless, like, she's like a concern I, troll or whatever. Yeah. Like I said to you, like, I can argue. She's not even a concern troll. This woman is just like, She's gaslighting you, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like, uh, okay, I can argue with someone about concept or opinion all day long. If you want to say toxic masculinity is a thing, the concept of toxic, toxic masculinity, I can argue with you. I think you're wrong. I don't think it's a thing, but we can argue about that. And, I, and you can tell me why you think it is, et cetera. But for you to say this factual thing, this observable fact isn't real, the sky is not blue or the gravity doesn't exist, let's debate. It's like, no, I'm not debating that. This is why flat earthers don't get to go to scientific conferences and debate about flat earth. It's just too stupid of a, of a, too stupid. Too stupid yeah. of a premise to be accepted in rational debate among scientists. Like you don't, they don't, they don't get to go. You don't get to debate that shadow banning doesn't exist. You can go see it. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's dumb. And, but my favorite was that she was like, uh, I was like, yeah, you can go look with your own eyes. And then she's like, wrong as usual. <laughs> she says, she what says, I don't know. I don't know. Is she, she blind? I don't know, but she is wrong as usual. I know people in social media. And I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not an argument. I know people in social, everybody knows people in social media, don't they? I mean, maybe not, but I do. I mean, clear, but that's not an argument. Do, do I really? Once again, because I love it. <laughs> it's like, a, wrong as usual. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's kind of a valley, a valley girl with some, I don't know, attitude. It's a, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I know people on the social media, okay? <laughs> oh, you know people on social media. Oh my god, oh la la. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, do I have to say like I, I didn't want to? I don't. I I, I didn't want to have to engage on that level. But I felt, and then another woman came in, and I felt like she was asking me to engage on that level and be like, well, who do you know? And so, really, I have to go into that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, I think there's an IQ threshold that you just need to have a cutoff for, Carrie. And you just That's what I was saying. Yes, to you. And I I know this sounds mean, and I don't mean for it to sound mean, but. That woman is too low IQ to be, I mean, we don't, I don't need you in our, I don't, if you're going to debate whether shadow banning is real or not, like, I don't, goodbye. And, and refuse to go look at it yourself and say you're just yeah. wrong when I say you can go look <laughs> at it. Like, it's not. It's a statement of fact. Oh, right. wrong. <laughs> go look at it. Wrong. I cannot go look at it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm, I cursed in this one a couple of times. You can maybe bleep it. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay, I'll see you later. Dude. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for the uh, epilogue, Carrie. Okay. Bye. <laughs>